Hello everybody, welcome to Llama Love. Now I have an idea of what I'm going to do based on a paper painting I've already done. So I want to start with this little model, she's going to be great today, and just tap in some beautiful color right on top of our eyelid in the makeup area. I'm using a pretty teal and a lilac on a petal sponge, and I just want to make sure I'm being nice and gentle since I'm going over the eyes. We also are going to take the paint right above the eyebrow a little bit to give her a bigger overall shape around her eyes. Once that color's in place, I'm ready to start my llama. Now I'm using a filbert brush, and this brush is going to help me. I load up a one stroke pink and white, and I'm just doing a nice basic rectangle shape. On the top rounded corners of either side of that rectangle, I want to add a nice little ear, about the shape of like a petal, and then just color it in. Drawing animals can be so much fun, but it can be really intimidating. So know that this just goes like any other face paint. We are just putting in some basic shapes that then we'll refine a little bit later. We wanna also add an egg shape for the muzzle that goes right in the middle of this rectangle. It's going to be really important that we have that based in in color because it makes the outlining so much easier. Once this is done, we want to double load a petal brush with some white and some bright pink. And then we're going to just go right over her eyebrow and give her a petal brow. These look so beautiful and they're so easy to do. And then we're going to add a five or six petal little flower in the corner of each eye. Now, it can be intimidating to paint in the corner of the eye, so one little tip if you're doing a flower there is to just lay down the petal that goes closest to the eye first, and that way you don't end up with this trying to paint a petal that goes over the eyelid that's in the kid's eye and it's like driving you crazy. So that can really help to lay that one down first. Once you have these flowers in place, it's a good time to just look at the design and see if you're happy with it. In order to create diversity in a design, it's really nice with flowers to have at least two different kinds of flowers. So this is just back to our filbert, and this is like a 3 8 filbert, and we are just painting red clouds. Don't even think of them as flowers. We don't need that stress or pressure. We're just putting in some nice little blobs of red. Then, this is my favorite part of painting flowers, which I know is ridiculous, but I love it. We're just using an even smaller filbert and tucking in some little flicks. And they look like leaves. It's like magic. So when you're looking for where to put leaves in a floral element of your design, what you want to do is you want to look for anywhere that you can see a V. This can happen between flowers. It can happen between petals. But anywhere there is a little V, we know that it'll look perfect to have a little leaf poking out and sneaking there. It's also a great tool to be able to connect parts of a design. So you can see that I use the leaves to almost give our llama a little collar. So anywhere you have a little open space and it needs something, you can just tuck in a couple little extra leaves. Now, when you are doing a design, it is super important that you understand the difference between what is the focal point of the design and what is the supporting cast. So even though there are more flowers than llamas in this design, the flowers are supporting the llama. And so we want to make sure that they don't upstage our llama. And to do that, we want to keep all of our detail work very simple. As you can see, I'm not outlining any petals or anything. We are using a round brush to go through on top of the pink flower and add a bunch of yellow dots. Then we use that same brush with white and add a bunch of white dots on top of the yellow. Then we also want to add this white to anywhere that looks like it needs an extra little bit of sparkle. So I do this on top of the leaves. I do this. It almost becomes its own flower. I want to do it at the base of each of the petals as well as in the center of the flower itself in the corner of each eye. So we just get to have fun with this. Think of it almost like fairy dots or even a little bit of like summer snow and it just comes down and it makes everything look better. So we just go along and do this nice smattering of white dots. This is another excellent time to look at the design and to say, am I balanced? What's empty? I love using white dots in the corner, the inside corner of the eyes 
as well as right underneath the eyelids. I don't have to worry about getting them perfect because they're just little dots. And then of course we can add our little sparkly stars, which are so much fun. We are ready for the line work. Now this is intense and it can be intimidating. So take a deep breath, make sure your load is exactly on point the way you want it to be, and then get going. One thing that makes llamas look like llamas is to make sure that we get the eyes really widely spaced apart. In most human drawings, the eyes are one eye width apart. But here you can see we need the place for the entire muzzle in between the eyes. So these eyes are two or three eye widths apart and that is going to help your llama look so good. And in between the eyes, we just wanna do a nice little arch and below that we paint a little heart. Now this little heart and arch is what's going to do the top of the muzzle and then we just trace around and it's so nice because we've already got the base color showing us where to go. Then we turn our little heart into a balloon with that little string hanging down and then a simple little smile. Once we're ready to do the other outlines we want to focus on the ears, get them nice and perky pointing up and then just a soft wiggle down. To get a really beautiful wiggly outline, you just relax your hand a little bit and let the bristles flow as they go down. Once our black is in place, we can rest a little and go, Ooh, we made it, <laughs> which is always a good part of a design for me. And then we can go back to our white brush, add a couple little white dots right on the eyes to make it just look happy. And then the rest is just highlighting. We can add a nice little white swirl down and across the top, which gives depth and dimension and just makes this fur look like something we want to touch. It's so fluffy and wonderful. If we do a highlight that we're not happy with, just using our finger to tap it out is perfect. And I love in a design as simple as this to keep the black focused on the llama, but of course I want eyeliner. So I go in and I just add a white white eyeliner and it looks so good. Now it's time for sparkles. I love to use a glitter gel just on the face and then add my loose chunky glitter on top of that. It helps me be able to control exactly where it goes and exactly how much I get on there. We also wanna add our loose glitter to the paint itself and then come in for some lips. I love to do the lip work at the very end so that it doesn't get smudged or licked or you know messed up before we are doing our final touches and getting ready for that big reveal moment and of course, a picture. We also have the opportunity to just throw some sparkles right onto the lips. Using a close color to the color of the paint will make them look fantastic. And here we have it, a simple little floral llama that we will love. And when we love it, the kids will love it. Happy painting, everybody.